Hi and welcome. So today I want to share with you why we shouldn't be coping with our emotional eating, even if those coping mechanisms are healthy. So if you're new here, welcome. My name is Michelle. I'm a certified holistic nutritionist that specializes in emotional eating. And so I wanted to talk about coping and healthy coping and really understanding that we need to resolve our emotional eating and it's possible to resolve it. We don't need to keep on coping. And the reason I want to emphasize this is that emotional eating itself is a coping mechanism. And so, you know, when we are on this journey of emotionally eating, we just want to be free of the pain. We want relief. And so we're going to do things to just give us that temporary relief from our emotional eating. But what we need to realize is that emotional eating itself is a coping mechanism. So what's a coping mechanism? So a coping mechanism is something we develop when we are in a situation that has stressors that we can't control, that we don't feel we have power over. We can't just get up and leave a situation and we feel disempowered. And this is why we created the emotional eating coping mechanism and the seeds start when we're really young because as children, we really depend on our parents or caregivers to um, help us meet our needs, to help us regulate our emotions, move through any discomfort or distress, help us find solutions. And if our parents or caregivers weren't able to do that, that discomfort, that stress, those uncomfortable emotions, those unresolved emotions, they stay in us and they feel uncomfortable. And so we have to figure out a way to not feel uncomfortable. And that's why we eventually start coping. We start moving towards, you know, food to soothe and numb out that discomfort. It's not a true resolution. And so when we are in this pattern and we are trying to resolve it, so I'm here for resolution, not more coping, and we're told to do X, Y, and Z, and we need a healthier coping mechanism, it's actually just putting us back into the same place. It's just making us switch one habit to another. So instead of emotionally eating, we might go for a walk or we might, you know, vent to a friend or we might take a shower. We are still distracting because emotional eating itself is a distraction. It's a distraction from the discomfort. It's a distraction from us feeling out of control. It's a distraction from us feeling like we don't have autonomy or power in a situation. And as children, unfortunately, we are in the hands of our parents and caregivers. We can't just get up and leave a situation. But now you're an adult. If you're watching this, you are an adult. You have that power. And so why would you continue coping when you have the power to resolve a situation? And this doesn't mean that life doesn't happen. Life is happening. We are feeling things that are uncomfortable. But when you resolve this pattern, you have the tools, you have the um, capacity and regulation to move through that in an empowered way. You're no longer coping or distracting. You're actually looking things in the eyes. And so Emotional eating is really multi-layered and I always share that this starts in childhood and you know, it sort of snowballs. We start learning these really unhealthy ways of being with food and our body because we're searching for that acceptance and that validation. And we think if we look a certain way and it, we think this will help us stop feeling out of control with food because of course our emotional eating and feeling out of control of food is leading us to having these physical symptoms. Um, maybe we have health issues, we have weight issues, or we just feel out of control, or we're constantly obsessing about food. Um, mentally, we feel really like, you know, kind of stuffed. We're constantly thinking about food, constantly thinking about our body. We're constantly trying to feel okay. We're trying to be enough. And so we don't want to pile on more coping mechanisms because you can resolve this. You can move through this. And I want to make that abundantly clear. And I want to share with you why you can resolve this. We can resolve whatever's coming up, whatever triggers are coming up around your emotional eating, because triggers are sort of the first opening awareness of something is not right. A trigger in a current day situation does not mean it's that specific situation that's bothering us. It could be. So a trigger is usually telling us there's something deeper going on and we can follow that to the root. Or if we are really in tune with ourselves, once we move past this emotional eating pattern and we really get in touch with who we are, 
real time, moment to moment, we can use our emotions to discern. But this journey of resolving your emotional eating is partly a journey of coming back to a healthy relationship with your emotions and with food and your body. And so we need to be looking at all of these areas because some of the solutions out there, they might have it right there. You know, they're giving you tactics and tools to kind of be okay with food. And, you know, there's a lot of intuitive eating advice or, you know, tune into yourself or, or advice around body acceptance or body positivity. And with emotions, you know, we, we have different tools. But what I've found with a majority of those tools, they're on the surface. Doesn't mean they don't have a place and they're not, you know, they don't give some relief. But they're not tapping into that deeper core part of us, getting into these core issues. That's how we create true resolution from the root. We have to get to these core issues and we have to look at the triggers that are guiding us to this deeper part of us. And we have to be able to learn how to get to that deeper root. So what I'm saying here is that it's not always about a deeper root. Sometimes it is a simply a... Um, sort of something we have to navigate in real life. Like sometimes we have excuses about why we can't drink enough water and it's a matter of just finding a new solution. But when we have this perpetual pattern, this perpetual obsession, it keeps coming up and our simple solutions don't work. Like the ones I mentioned, we have to go deeper. And so what I've found with clients um, and for myself, so I experienced this, I was on this emotional eating journey. I didn't even know I was emotionally eating um, what it was, but I had this obsession around food, around my body. I thought if I could control those things um, and then I would emotionally eat and sort of you know sabotage myself I could never seem to make things work and I couldn't get the results that I wanted and so these three main areas are what we need to really move through to resolve this pattern because each of these three areas, food, body, and your emotions, they have certain triggers that come up and they all actually weave into each other and play into it. And so emotional eating is a coping mechanism. It's when we use food to soothe ourselves from any discomfort. You can liken this to gambling or people with an, of another addiction. It's an addiction. An addiction is just something we use to kind of feel okay in the moment. It doesn't get to the root and it's on the surface. And of course, we have to live with food. I've had clients that have had other addictive patterns, maybe around smoking, um, and they quit. They can cut those things out of their life, but they just transfer it because they never got into the deeper root of what's going on. They never found that true resolution. And so, if we look at these three areas, how we're going to get to resolution in these areas is really to start shifting from the old way of being with them to the new way. And the old way is in a survival mode. It is um, restrictive, or let's say around food, and we want to shift to an abundant way. And so as we're doing that, as we're shifting, what we can do around food is notice in our body, start tuning into our body, our body's needs for um, food, how satisfied we feel using certain strategies. So I'm a holistic nutritionist around um, optimizing digestion, which optimizes mood and it cuts out one of those triggers around emotional eating. And it's also recreating this healthier relationship to food because when we obsess and we restrict, that triggers sort of stress and the this pattern. And so we're coming back to a healthier relationship around food, really getting into the root of what works for your body. You tune into your body, your needs, so you're not externally looking for something else to tell you you're enough and you're okay. You're really feeling that in your body. And we can discern that true from emotional hunger and see how foods feel to you. So you're no longer second guessing yourself of I should be eating this, I shouldn't be eating that, I'm wrong, I'm bad, and all of the negative sort of spiral that you go into. Um, we can clear that because now we have guidelines and we can go into really connecting with your body to see the deeper truth. The second area around body acceptance is really connecting back to your body, your body's rhythms, understanding that your body is unique and how it functions and knowing that your energy levels are not going to be like what you see out there. You've been judging yourself by the template out there, looking at how you treat your body, starting accepting 
it from where it's at right now so that you can create that transformation and start detaching your self-worth from your body. You've been trying to create this body to have that self-worth and that acceptance that's not really about that. And it's not to say you can't transform your body and it won't shift to its healthy, but when we attach our self-worth and our acceptance to it, it actually creates more stress and triggers shame and the emotional eating patterns. We're resolving this at a deeper root level. And then finally, around our emotions, we're looking at those triggers. So there are triggers in all of these areas, but especially around the emotional eating pattern, we're finding when we're actually doing this behavior, getting into it, going deeper through somatic meditations, going into the root of when this pattern was creating, created this unresolved uh, event that happened and resolving that trauma in the body. So this is trauma in form. We are resolving it at this deep level, processing and integrating it, meeting our true needs so we can move forward powerfully. This is about resolution. This is not about coping. This is not about a new healthy coping mechanism. It's about seeing the truth of who you are. Your body needs to be nourished. It needs to be taken care of. And we need to honor our emotions and move through them. We need to understand what they mean. And in a way, all of these are centered around the body. We put food into our body. It interacts with our body. We are doing things for our body in terms of movement and nourishing our bodies and our emotions when they're unprocessed live in the body. So we're really connecting back deeply to the body. And as we do this, we're going to have so much more clarity and insight and alignment about our next steps forward. We're no longer going to be coping with life, surviving with life. We're going to be shifting to thriving because now we're connected to our body. We're shifting from a, you know, dysregulated nervous system to a calmer nervous system, which really turns on our prefrontal cortex. It gives us a lot of clarity and insight. It's going to help us see what's going to be the next right steps for us. So we don't want to move through life coping and slapping on a band-aid solution. We want deep resolution because when we move through these areas, we're going to be so much better able to handle the stressors of life. We're going to be able to nourish our bodies so we're resilient. We're going to be able to tune into our bodies um, and we're going to be able to discern things for ourselves. And this is what creates that empowerment. And at the same time, your body's going to start feeling more at ease. There's not that stress. It's going to feel, you're going to feel more free. You're not obsessing about food in your body. You're seeing the true root and you're going to feel that confidence. So this is what we do inside of the emotional evolution program. There is a step-by-step -step methodology to guide you through these three areas. There is tons of support. There's coaching. There are the deep somatic meditations to get into the root so that you're shifting this pattern. And through this, you're going to just feel that ease and that confidence. So if this is resonating for you, I'll put the link for the program below. It's a truly transformational program you know, clients that come in and come out, they're a different person and they really start seeing um, and breaking away from this pattern and this sort of obsession. And if you're ready to resolve your emotional eating from the root, then I'd love to invite you to also book in an emotional eating clarity call. On the call, we find out more about you, what your goals are, what you've tried, and how we can support you in the program or if we're even a good fit. So I'll leave the link for that below on the call, you gain a lot of clarity. There's a lot of clarifying questions and it'll give you a lot of insight into what's been happening for you. So I just want to say thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe. I look forward to sharing more with you and I hope you have a great day.